Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ray Marquina, aka the official Arcaneer, and today we're back at it with another exciting fabric topic. Today, I want to talk about something I feel a lot of people overlook, and that's going to be working within notebooks without attaching a lake house to it. As I've been developing over the last several months, one of the pain points that I've realized is as I merge off of my development branch and create my own feature branch, if I open a notebook and it has a lake house attached, it will still be attached to my dev branch. And that can cause several problems because as I start making modifications, start doing transformations, I may unintentionally be updating a, a table that I did not mean to. So what I would much rather prefer is that the table, uh, the lake house that is attached is automatically rebinded to my feature workspace lake house, not the one in dev. So again, that could unintentionally cause problems where, you know, someone might be doing ETL testing. You might have scheduled pipelines that um, are expected to have a certain amount of data and you might be, you know, potentially impacting that data or maybe even looking at reports, unintentionally impacting those reports because of this issue. So today I'm going to walk you through how you can bypass attaching a lake house altogether so that maybe this isn't going to be an issue for you going forward. So sit back and let's jump right into it. All right. So the first thing I want us to take a look at is what actually happens when I merge off of main. So here I have a notebook that's loaded some data for me and I have a bronze lake house. I'm going to click source control and I'm going to create my own localized feature branch. So we'll give it a meaningful name. We'll say feature test branch. And we'll create a brand new workspace. We'll call it arc dev ray workspace. This will be a new workspace that I'm creating off of my dev branch. And what I want to show you is that as it creates these objects, it creates this notebook and it creates um, this lake house that when I open up that notebook, it will still be attached to my dev workspace. And again, that is a, a pain point because in this particular instance, if someone relies on that data in dev for other processes and I start making changes, that would unintentionally impact that person. So let me open up a notebook here and be data loader. And let me show you what it looks like. So here you can see I'm just loading in some customer data, product data, and order data. And if I look at the lake house that's attached, you'll see that I have data in here automatically. Now, one of the things that it doesn't show is it doesn't actually show you that this is attached to dev. But the way that I know it's attached to dev is because if I go into my own feature workspace, again, Ray workspace, and I go into my bronze lake house, one of the things I'm going to see is this is actually empty. So the fact that this has data actually tells me that this is indeed pointing to my dev branch. So again, this is what I don't want. And one of the ways that I'm going to look to bypass this is by not attaching a lake house altogether. So let's go back to my workspace and let's create a brand new notebook. Let's create this notebook. And what we're going to leverage here is the MS Spark Utils list lake house. So let me grab the MS Spark Utils dot lake house, sorry, lake house list. And what this is going to do is this is going to print out all the lake houses that I have within my workspace. But for me, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say uh, lake house, I'm going to pass this into a variable called lake house info while this is running. Uh, but I wanted you to see the printout of what this is returning. Now, keep in mind, this is a list. So if I have multiple lake houses in here, it's going to return all of the lake houses um, that it has access, that it's able to, to see within my workspace. So if I have a gold, a bronze, a silver, it'll all be displayed here. So you'll see that I have some attributes like the name of the lake house, the workspace ID. What's most important here is for us is going to be the absolute path or the ABFS path, I should say. And one of the other things that I think is really powerful and why I might use this oftentimes is because I'm able to also extract the workspace ID that I'm in. 
So rather than use like maybe an API call, I could use this and I can just easily grab my workspace ID uh, without having to, to go through an API call within my notebook. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to want to specifically target that, you know, we want the bronze lake house. So we're going to say uh, bronze lake house. So we'll create this uh, variable. And we are going to use the next function. And we're going to say uh, item for item in my. So what we're essentially doing is we're iterating through this string here but only if the item display name item dot get so we'll say item dot uh, this the display name is equal to bronze right because we don't care about anything else and we want to make sure that we're coding in a way that we're <clears throat> targeting specifically what we're looking for so if i didn't include this and you know, I were to list everything, you know, maybe I'll get back like silver or maybe um, I'll get something that I wasn't looking for and I would land my data in a, in a place that I didn't want to. And we'll close this off. And now what we can do is because now we have this information here, we'll be able to extract that path explicitly. So we'll say bronze lake house path. And now we can say that this is going to be my bronze lake house and we want to extract the properties. Oh, and we'll say dot get the, oh, say dot get, and we want to get the ABFS attribute here. Well, let's go ahead and see if that works and let's see if we can print that out. So we'll print the uh, bronze lake house path here. Let's see if that gives us what we're looking for. If there's a syntax error. No, perfect. So again, this is going to give us the path that we're looking for, and it's targeting it specifically for the bronze lake house. And again, I'm doing this just in case I had multiple lake houses here. So now that we have this, right, this is going to be essential because now I can tell, now I can tell what path I want to use in order to, to land a delta table. So let's go ahead and let's go back to the um the original notebook, and I'm going to steal the customer data so that we can now use it for our notebook. Let me go ahead and create a brand new data frame. I don't need to use a temp view in this particular case because I'm just going to automatically store this into my, my path. So let's go ahead and create a table path now. And we can F string this and we're going to pass in our bronze lake house path. And we do need to give it a, a few more bits of information um, to extend that path. And what I need to give it is I need to say, I wanna load it in tables. I wanna load it into the DBO, ta uh, DBO schema. And I want it to be, uh, I want the table name to be called customer. So now that we have that established, what we can do is we can use this data frame and we can write back to that location. So customer.df.write, um, we can say dot format. We're gonna say that this is gonna be in Delta. We're gonna say dot mode is going to be overwrite. Whoop. And then lastly, we're gonna say save. So typically what you might use is you might use save table as. In this case, we need to use save and then we just need to pass in the table path. Again, this is without attaching a lake house. This is how we're able to bypass using a lake house altogether. And it's going to be by using that ABFS path. So <clears throat> this is running. This is a good sign that tells me that it's thinking. And if we go back over to my, my feature workspace lake house and I do a refresh here. Now I can see that I have the customer lake house here. Um, and let's just give it a second to see if we can get some data in here. But again, very powerful because now those pain points that I mentioned are no longer going to be an issue. So here you can see we have Bob all the way to Deanna. Now, the other thing that I forgot to mention that I want you to be made aware of is let's imagine that I went back to my uh, I continued to use this notebook that has the attached lake house. And let's say I did 
change it out so that it's, it's using my feature workspace lake house. I, I made the adjustments that I needed to make to the notebook and I'm ready to deploy back into, I create a PR and I'm ready to um, deploy this back into the main branch. Well, because it's attached to my feature branch or my feature workspace lake house, it will now go into dev with that attached lake house intact. I would either, I would either need to remember to change it back to dev before the PR, or I would need to remember to um, uh, change it after the fact, right? Again, a lot of pain points, a lot of things that we're putting on the developer to remember. So using it in this method without attaching a lake house using the ABFS path at this point seems to be preferred. So that's going to be a wrap for today's video. This is how you can use Microsoft Fabric notebooks without attaching a lake house and why it might just save you from headaches in your development workflow. Now, I should have you know that I am actively working with Microsoft on this, on this feature pain point. They are aware and I have made them aware of this issue and they are telling me that this is something on their roadmap to fix. So when they do fix it, this is no longer going to be an issue and we can attach lake houses and the binding of those lake houses are going to be set appropriately. But until then, I wanted to give you a solution in case this is something that you're facing today. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss more deep dives like this. Thank you so much for watching and we're going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.